since posing our teaser video of Boris that we done uh, the other day, uh, we've been asked a few times uh, what render engine we use. And we've just been using the um, built-in iClone render engine. Uh, we're not using iRay, uh, no Unreal, not export out or anything like that. Just um, keeping it simple. So we thought we'd do a quick little tutorial about how to set the lighting up um, for getting nice renders out of iClone. Um, the biggest thing with iClone is um, if you can get the lighting right, then you're going to get a nice finished render. So this is the, uh, the lighting setup we've got for this character at the moment and you can see even in real time it renders quite nicely um, so if I open up a start new project and if we go to character creator 3 see we've got the model in here and we'll bring send this model over to iClone so send to iClone no it's wrong one So we'll start off with the default um, settings and I'll show you how we get from this to the the final image that we had. So when we come in it looks okay but the um, it doesn't look as good as before and the quality is a little bit plasticky. Um, so the first thing I do is I add in um, one of the preset lightings. Now, what I've noticed is in iClone that the lighting setup in Character Creator 3 is very different to the one in iClone. And all the defaults in here, if we go to Atmosphere, you can see we've got all these different default light settings. And they're not actually in iClone. Um, so what I tend to do is, or what I've already done, um, which I would recommend doing, is finding this file. So if you right-click and press Find File, and that will tell you where that folder is, and you just want to copy that folder, go into iClone, and then in here um, you'll see that You've got atmosphere, but it won't add this atmosphere folder. I've added this one in. So what I would do here is say, click on basic, do the right click, find file. This is going to give you the folder. And you can see I've already pasted it in here, but just press right click and paste. And then you will have the same lighting um, presets as you do in Character Creator 3. Um, so if you want the, the default, you can see that's the same light setup. And straight away, that's um, giving you a better render result. Um, but then I'll just generally go through, depending on the character, and find the best lighting for that character. And going through these, you can see how it dramatically changes the look of your character. Um, so say if I wanted to go with something like this, I would then go into the scene and have a play around with the lights. The best way I find of doing this is by turning each one on and off. See what they do in what they do. And then just adjust them to suit. So um say this one's quite bright, so I'll turn them up right down on that. Um again turn this one down a little bit. Uh and just like I say, go through until you've got it looking how you want. So that one's quite bright as well. You want to get some dark shadows in, add some detail. And there we go. So straight away, very quickly, you've got a nice quality render for your character. Uh, then the next thing I would do is just have a play around with the settings here. The ones that I tend to look at are Ambient occlusion, um, though I don't have that on too high because it makes it look a little bit, loses quality a little bit, so I have that on quite low. You can put on the HDR effect, so if you want to get the, um, the bloom, sometimes works quite well, but I'm going to leave that one off. Actually, no, just turn that one down. Tone mapping can give you a nice 
nice effects as well. Just kind of like brings the contrast up and everything. Um, and then you can put on your image basic base lighting and again use the default. So you've got like an outdoor scene here. Bring this in. This will add in that little bit of outdoor lighting as well if you want to use that. And let me go through. I don't generally change anything on shadows. Two shadows don't change. You can have a look at what filters are on. Take them on and off as you wish. And then again, you can play around with the glow, um, the ambient strength. I do tend to leave that on there. But those are pretty much all the settings that I play with um, to get the render quality to how I would like it. Um, there are things that you can play with as well with, in regards to, like, say, the hair um, for the shadows. So if we go to Shadow Threshold. If you want to add more shadows or completely get rid of them, I find there's a nice middle ground around here. And there we go, and that's it. And also make sure that everything's um, got subdivision on the character for it being nice and smooth. Now the next stage is rendering out. So to render out we go, I normally render out as an image sequence. Um, I will have it on, say we've got 1080. Um, I will normally put super, uh, super sampling on about medium. Um, there's not a massive, massive amount of difference in detail. But depending on, uh, I think it, you know, obviously it's going to affect the speed of the render. So medium will do for now. But if I am doing a final high res render, I'll probably stick that onto high. Um, then I always make sure to have the optimized with full screen render. Um, as a red online, this gives a much better result. And this is it. That's it uh, as regards to render settings. And then I render out the animation, and that is it. So uh, there's no exporting out to anything like. Um, Blender or Maya, or yeah, you know, the the other pop uh, option is to go to Unreal um, and use the render engine there, which is really nice. But I think you can get with a little bit of uh, playing around with the light settings, you can get really nice results um, within iClone itself. The only other thing I would then add to this is in After Effects. Um, I would actually, um, or whatever video software, um, editing software you've got, I would add in um, some motion blur. So I'm using the pixel motion blur. Again, not even playing around uh, doing anything with the settings. Um, if you play this through, you can kind of see. And then if I turn the motion blur on. You can see that it's had, um, automatically added in that little bit of motion blur. And it's only subtle, but I do think it adds a little bit um, to the quality of the render and the animation movement. So uh, that's the only thing I kind of do in post uh, to improve on the um, rendering. But overall, uh, that is my process for rendering out in iClone um, without having to use any external or third-party rendering software.